Today we're going to explore some of the areas of Metro Vancouver that have seen the most price appreciation, areas that are booming in value, and we're going to figure out why exactly that is. From my point of view, my opinion as a real estate agent that's been doing this for almost 20 years and helped hundreds of families settle in Vancouver and move throughout Vancouver. Why are these areas seeing bigger price jumps than anywhere else in an area that's already expensive? What's so great? What's so special about these communities? And why should you think about moving to these specific areas if you're thinking of moving to Vancouver? These are areas more than likely that are going to be excellent investments for many, many years to come. So let's get into all of that right now. Hey, my name is Sebastian Albrecht with the Living in Vancouver, BC team, and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, this channel is all about moving to, and you guessed it, living in Vancouver. I put out videos just like this one every single week, and I put a lot of time and effort into creating this content that is trying to help educate you about what it's like to live here. And I hope you're really enjoying this channel. If you do like it, give it a like, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel because these videos come every single week. And this week we're talking about areas in Metro Vancouver that are seeing massive amounts of price appreciation. And this is very much bucking the trend. So right now we're in the fall of 2024. And for most of the last year, we've seen prices basically go sideways, kind of slide depending on where you are. So I'm gonna get into some numbers right now, but basically I'm doing this to try and help you understand what the benchmark is, what are we comparing to? And so for overall, for all of the lower mainland, in the last year, prices have slid one and a half percent. And the typical home in the lower mainland is going for $1,126,200. So that is the benchmark that we're gonna to compare to. The areas that we're considering that we're looking at are doing a lot better and they are bucking this trend quite considerably. We need to figure out where they are, why it is that they're bucking this trend and what's so great about them. All right, so in order to do all this, let's get right to the map and I'm gonna share my screen with you. Here we go. So here's the map uh, generally of, of uh, the lower mainland, uh, the southwestern corner of, of British Columbia. And this is the area that we're most concerned about. You know what? I'm super curious about where, when I began this process, where are the hottest areas in Metro Vancouver? Is it in the city of Vancouver? Is it way out in the suburbs? And I literally went through every single sub area I had finding a needle in a haystack and comparing one to the other, figuring out which of these areas saw the most price appreciation in the last year. And to be honest, I was surprised. I was shocked. And I've been doing this almost 20 years. So let's get into what those areas are. And, um, you know, first one is actually in the city of Vancouver. So uh, where there is the city of Vancouver. Yeah, it's just this tiny little piece. We are such a small part of all of Metro Vancouver. Uh, but this is where most people live. And so where do you think in Vancouver saw the, the most price appreciation in the last year? Was it Point Grey? Was it Caresdale? Was it uh, Hastings Sunrise? No, in fact, it was Yale Town. That's right, Yale Town. And Yale Town is down in downtown Vancouver over here. That's the downtown peninsula. And Yale Town is approximately this area here. That's kind of what the real estate board roughly considers to be Yale Town. So in that area, there's 15,000 people. One of the most densely populated areas. I mean, Vancouver is the most densely populated city in Canada, and we have 6,000 people per square per kilometer. In Yale Town, it's 26,500. So this is a very densely populated area. And Yale Town saw an eight and a half percent rise in value in the last year going up to a typical property in Yale Town is $937,800. This was the lowest typical price um, of all the areas that we're gonna be covering. So this is gonna be the best value if you're looking for value. But one of the reasons that the price point is lower here is because this whole area, well, the downtown peninsula here, generally, we uh, we just have condos, condos and townhouses. And that's what you have in Yale Town. There are no detached houses that would really drive up the value. You have 
condos and townhouses. Really what I would say that was going on here is this is a recovery from COVID. So in the beginning of COVID or when COVID actually initially hit, there was roughly a 15% decline. And on top of COVID, well, COVID really just made living in a dense place less desirable. And the people that lived in the downtown core kind of fled outside of the downtown core. People didn't want to be stuck in high rises where they were stuck inside with other people and they didn't see the value in paying extra to be in such a dense space. And that's why we saw so many people move out into less dense areas, not just the suburbs, but the more remote areas. And we saw massive price gains in areas like Squamish, on the Sunshine Coast, in Chilliwack, in Hope. And meanwhile, the downtown core, the densest part of Metro Vancouver, in fact, the densest part of Canada, was really hit hard and people just went elsewhere. Um, on top of that, we really saw interest rates take a massive hit. And so we all know what happened in with interest rates in 2022. We had one interest rate hike after another, after another. And then for the beginning of 2023, it seemed like the clouds had lifted and it seemed pretty certain that we were gonna start seeing a, a decline in interest rates. But then there were a couple extra interest rate hits that happened in June and July of 2023. So from that point onward, which is really roughly a year ago, we've seen a, a pretty decent recovery. And that is sort of the recurring theme that we're gonna see through all of these areas. These are areas that were more sensitive, I would say, than most other places to higher interest rates. And Yale Town specifically was more sensitive to that because it's an area that one people tended to have there's a lot of investors that own property in Yale Town. Um, so a lot of people that were perhaps just mom and pop investors that were holding a property and and maybe not like all that cash flow positive. And so when things turned, they were hit hard. And so there were a lot of people that were trying to get out of those mortgages pretty quickly so that they could make sure that their primary residence was secure, right? So if you had capital tied up in an investment property, well, you'd probably want to ditch that investment property. So you could put a little more money down on your primary residence and not pay as much of uh, the interest rate that, that we were seeing. And we went from, 0.75 interest rates to 5% incredibly quickly, really within a year time span. And it happened faster than anybody thought. And as a result, people kind of panicked. And that's where prices really dropped in an area like Yale Town specifically. But why is Yale Town coming back? Well, as you can see, the downtown core is not big. This whole area is 3.7 kilometers squared. And if you believe that Vancouver has a bright future, well, this is an area that you wanna own in. So a lot of investors are eager to, to own in this area. And I think a lot of investors are realizing that there's an opportunity right now. The market is a little bit weaker. We see interest rates are, are more than likely to be on the decline and they've already started. So there's a, a lot of investors who are coming back in the market, but also first time buyers, young people who wanna be in the center of things. They wanna be downtown. They don't wanna be out in the distant suburb. They wanna live right there rather than you know out here perhaps and you know that's not for everyone of course but for the majority there's a higher demand in this region than there is out out further and that's what we're sort of seeing recently this return to the popularity of the central part of the city and it doesn't have to be in the city of vancouver but just closer to it into more urban environments and that is generally what we're seeing but not all of this just a spoiler alert not all of this is pointing in that direction which i find actually quite fascinating but you're gonna have to watch all the way to the end to really see how this all plays out. So thing to remember in Yale Town specifically is that there are no houses, just uh, this area. Um, so no houses, only condos and townhouses. Condos saw the biggest jump, 11.1% in the last year. And a typical condo in Yale Town is going for $901,400. Townhouses were a little bit behind the, the condos rising 9.9%, uh, going to $1,730,000. $736,900. If you want to check out a video all about townhouses and what they're like to own, be sure to check out 
this video. I'm not sure what side. I think it goes up over over on this shoulder. It's a video I did all about the uh, mistakes I see people making when purchasing townhouses. And you do need to be careful when you're purchasing a townhouse in Yale Town about the maintenance fees. Just a warning, but check out that video to make sure you're covered. But this really is a coveted location. People who love urban living. There's so much going on in Yale Town. You're right at the thick of things. If you wanna to go to see a concert, watch movies, watch the Canucks or the BC Lions, or go to shows, concerts, there's things happening all the time. This is the place to be. Having nightlife, being around friends, but also aside from all those things, having nature at your doorstep. I mean, you're right on the seawall. Uh, right along here and you have Granville Island right across the water you have Stanley Park right over here I mean truly Yale Town is a spectacular place and you know if you want to get out of the city and you want to get up into the mountains that is 20 minutes away and right up this way you're heading out to um, uh, Whistler. Uh, in fact, I'm going to Whistler tomorrow. I'm really looking forward to it and just having a, a relaxing time, one-on-one um, -on -one time with my wife, which we haven't had in a really long time. But uh, also, you know, getting on to, um, oh, it's actually up here, right there in, in Horseshoe Bay. Uh, well, not quite there. It's right there. <laughs> uh, you're getting onto the ferry and able to get over onto Vancouver Island or the Sunshine Coast or to Bowen Island. But that is one of the reasons that Yale Town is so popular. It really does offer everything. And I'm really not surprised that it saw some of the strongest price appreciation in the last year. And I would be shocked if it really doesn't continue for some time to come. At the stats, um, it peaked in May of 2022 at $969,100 uh, for a typical home um, and dropped all the way down to $830,500. Uh, so it's at $160,000 decline, well over 15%. Um, and you saw prices really quickly jump back up. Uh, this is probably more noticeable than anywhere else that we're looking. But uh, in July of 2023, rising to 970,000, uh, basically just a few hundred dollars higher than the peak in May of 2022. And then those two surprise interest rate hikes in June and July nailed Yale Town where it was just really moving sideways. And I mean, it's not entirely clear that it's only on the way up now, but I would say based on what I see happening elsewhere, that is what I see happening here, that as long as interest rates, as long as we're not shocked by uh, interest rates spiking up again or uh, just staying flat, as long as we do see a, at least a couple more uh, declines, I think that investors are gonna be really rushing back to, to look at what the values are in an area like Yale Town. And right now people are able to buy without a lot of competition. They might not be saving tons of money, but there are some opportunities. But really what the distinct advantage right now for many investors is that they don't have to feel like they're overpaying. They don't have to compete. They don't have to go in with no subjects. They can search out the properties that they really want in the buildings that they really want to be in and secure those for the long term. And that's why prices are starting to rise again as those buyers and the first time buyers who are feeling more confident in the future are coming back to the market. So here we are back to the map and we're leaving Vancouver, but where are we going? We're going just one uh, city over. We're heading over to Burnaby and Burnaby is this approximate area, roughly. Um, that's the city of Burnaby, our neighbor directly to the east of the city of Vancouver. There's some parts of Burnaby that are very, very similar to Vancouver and some parts that are very different. Some areas that are much more suburban, some areas that are actually becoming incredibly urban. There is one area and that area is Willingdon Heights that saw, and just on the map here, just to show you exactly, Willingdon Heights is this little area right in here. Um, Willingdon Heights has 12,500 people. It has a population density of approximately uh, 6,000 people. So that's very similar to the city of Vancouver. A little mix of condos and townhouses as well as houses, but it is predominantly detached houses that you're going to find in this area. And Willingdon uh, saw a price appreciation of 9.1%, a pretty substantial amount in the last year. Remember, all of, my, all of the Lower Mainland declined 1.5%. This 
was plus 9.1 percent to a typical the typical home in Willington Heights is now one million five hundred and thirty nine thousand nine hundred dollars so substantially higher than what we saw in Yale Town back in Vancouver uh, but that's because we're taking into account a lot of detached homes in this particular area detached homes are Incidentally, what actually drove most of the price appreciation, 7.2% um, in fact, uh, was the hike for detached homes. The typical detached home rose to $2,021,700. Condos uh, rose just 1.9% to $645,100. So if you're looking for a condo, this is an area where you're seeing really strong value in comparison to downtown Vancouver. Then townhouses actually declined 3.9%. So they saw more of a decline than we saw overall in the lower mainland. Um, and they fell to $945,900. I also wanted to point out that Willingdon Heights is kind of playing catch up. It's areas sort of these, you know, this desirability of Burnaby and this alternative when people are looking at Vancouver and want that Vancouver vibe. This is a part of Burnaby that people are going to be looking at. And already areas like Vancouver Heights and Capitol Hill, the prices are considerably higher. And so what we have just seen in the last year, I think is also to some degree, Willingdon Heights playing catch up with those areas that surround it. And people realize, well, we don't need to be in those areas because Willingdon Heights is pretty darn fantastic. and I'd be happy to live there as well. So I think that's another reason that we saw prices kind of catch up. But I think this is likely to continue for all of these areas that they're going to continue to be highly desirable as people get more and more pushed out of the city of Vancouver and people are looking for alternatives that feel very similar for them. This was another area that was hard hit by interest rate hikes. And we can see this is sort of a typical graph of a lot of the areas that we're going to be looking at where they peaked in the spring of 2022. And then we had one interest rate hike after another, after another, well into the winter. Prices sort of went sideways and then things started to look a little more positive, right? The Bank of Canada started to, the rhetoric coming out of the Bank of Canada was more positive. And then we saw prices recover. Um, now in this case back, and then they had two price hikes in June and July, prices didn't decline sharply. We do see this in a number of areas where prices fell again. Um, and then recovered. But what we're seeing is that prices fell and recovered as interest rates, uh, as sort of the rhetoric became more positive and as interest rates, it became more obvious that interest rates are on the decline and actually declining. Well, prices starting to rise. And in this case, we're at an all time high for Willingdon Heights. What I'm seeing is there's a lot of people who are price conscious and they're looking for alternatives outside of the city of Vancouver. They may really like Vancouver. They might want to actually live in some of these catchments and some of these areas in the city of Vancouver and they want kind of a, a Vancouver experience. Well, Willingdon Heights is right on the border. This street right here is boundary and that is the division between Vancouver and Burnaby and it's really pretty arbitrary. I mean, if you live right here what's the difference in living there or over here they're very very similar a lot of people these days want to be in sort of walkable family friendly neighborhoods um, where there's a, a strong sense of community and i would say a lot of those people are being drawn to areas like main street riley park uh, the fraser hood this area here um, and where are we commercial drive hello commercial drive there we are right in in this zone um, and also Hastings Sunrise. Um, so these are four really strong areas that are drawing a lot of a lot of people. Well, if you're finding that you're not really, your money's not going quite as far, well, you may be looking in this area. This is a very, very similar area to what you're gonna experience in the Hastings Sunrise neighborhood, but your money's gonna go a little further. You might not be, spending less money, but what you get for that money is substantially more. The houses are gonna be a little bigger, a little bit newer. You might be able to buy a larger piece of property. And the same thing goes if you're looking at townhouses or condos and you're getting a phenomenal location, this sense of community, really strong community, good schools, um, right on Hastings, which I know Hastings has a bad name to a lot of people, but I wanna point out that this section of Hastings is a really interesting, fun, funky area. A lot of small mom and pop 
uh, shops and uh, sort of like an older Vancouver feel that's a little more geared toward the, towards the old Italian community, the old Portuguese. Um, and so you have some really interesting little shops um, and places to explore and restaurants and cafes and things um, in Willingdon Heights and Burnaby Heights here. But you're still so close to the city of Vancouver and commuting downtown, if that's where you work, is really easy and it's also easy to get on the highway and to go up to the north shore get into the mountains head up to squamish or pemberton uh, get onto the ferry and then also head this way out of the city out of metro vancouver and maybe go to the okanagan so when i was growing up the really key family neighborhoods were over in this area and if you live over here and i grew up right there it took like an hour to get over here, especially on a long weekend or something, to get onto the highway. The nice thing about living in these communities that are right on the highway, whether you're in the Vancouver side or the Burnaby side, is it's so easy to get in and out of the city. And I'm sorry for my drawings, they're pretty horrible. Um, let me erase that uh, mess. Uh, but you get the idea that that is one of the strong attractions of Willingdon Heights. And part of the reason that is so desirable and so many people are, are interested in living there and they're driving the prices up. I get it. This makes sense to me. And I hope that you get it now too. And maybe if you're thinking of moving here, this is an area you would think of moving to. I mean, if it's not, don't worry. I am a real estate agent and I can help you figure it out. I can help talk to you about what your family's goals are, what your plans are, what your priorities are. And from there, I can give you really great advice on what the areas you might wanna pinpoint and what the homes are that you might wanna pinpoint based on your budget. So I've helped hundreds of families just like yours over my 18 year career and I can help you as well. My contact information is right here on the screen. Be sure to reach out anytime and we can get that conversation going and started with your move to Vancouver. But for now, let's get back to this video. Area number three, guess where we're going? Um, we're going a little further east. We started in Vancouver, went to Burnaby, and now we're heading to one of my favorite little suburbs and it is little, it's just little New Westminster over here. Uh, New Westminster is right there, right on the on the banks of the Fraser. This was our first capital. It's got a lot of history, something that I love. I really enjoy sort of wandering around New West. But the area in New West that we're talking about today is Queen's Park. Uh, Queen's Park saw price appreciation of 9.3% in the last year. Uh, typical home in Queen's Park uh, at the moment is $1,532,100. So I think that's just slightly below Willingdon Heights. For the most part, we just see uh, detached homes in, in Queens Park. There are some condos, but predominantly it is a detached home area. There's just 2,800 people that live here. And I'm gonna show you exactly the area that we're talking about. It is uh, right here. It's not huge, right? Um, that is Queens Park right there. And it is named after this right here, which is technically called Queens Park. Um, and that's what it's named after. So Queens Park was actually the first public park. I only learned this recently, but the first public park in all of British Columbia. It was ahead of Stanley Park even and Queen Elizabeth Park. Um, and this is a beautiful space uh, right beside Queens Park. There developed a community of beautiful homes. This was a very luxurious area to live in the early 1900s and New Westminster being an early settlement, uh, being in the early capital of, of the, the area of the province uh, before Vancouver Island joined with um, British Columbia. And then they part of the agreement was that the, the provincial capital moved over to Victoria. Um, this area had a lot of money. And it was also, as you can see, as we move out a little bit, it was right on the banks of the Fraser. Very, very important for all the trade that was going up and down the river. And it was um, also, even after that, it was also, and still is, kind of at the crossroads. Before the highway, you can see a Highway 1 went, or, oops, that's not Highway 1, that's Highway 1, um, went around New Westminster. But before that, the highway went right through it. And it was sort of the, the main trading hub, the main shopping area for Metro Vancouver for a very long time. And there was a lot of money. And that is reflected 
in Queens Park. If you had money in New Westminster, that's where you lived. And so a lot of people are drawn to Queens Park because of the beauty of it. It is incredibly tranquil. I've talked about New Westminster before, and you might want to check out my video right there about the pros and the cons of living in New Westminster. But one of the things I talk about New Westminster is its urban environment. Um, that's not really the case when you're in Queens Park. Um, you don't feel like that at all. It is beautiful. It's essentially New West's Shaughnessy and Shaughnessy is Vancouver's equivalent of New Westminster's Queen's Park. A lot of the money was very similar. A lot of the styles of home are very similar. And in fact, today, both areas are protected by, by their respective cities as heritage designated areas. Um, so development in those areas is very, very challenging. And that is part of why prices have risen there. There's a drive for people. They People want to be in a nice family area. They want conveniences. They, they like in Queens Park, you're going to be very close to shopping. There's great shopping. There's great restaurants. Plus, you're incredibly central in Metro Vancouver in general. Um, if you live here, pretty much anywhere in New Westminster. But if you have the money to afford Queens Park and you have a family, you want a little more space, you find that homes are bigger here in comparison. In the city of Vancouver, if you lived over here, you're probably living in a 2000 square foot house, 2500 square foot house. I think I've said it before, but I have four kids. I live in Vancouver. We live in about 13, 1400 square feet. Uh, we have a suite in the basement. You know, that helps with the mortgage, of course, but but it's tight. I mean, there's six of us living in three bedrooms and that's we're lucky. Uh, it's pretty standard in the city of Vancouver. Lots of people are living in smaller spaces. So if you don't want to do that, you know, moving out this way um, and I, I help I've helped a few families move into this area and they absolutely love Queens Park. And I remember one family, one, some of my favorite clients not that long ago, they moved with uh, the mother in law uh, and they bought a, a property in Queens Park together that had two houses. So mother in law lives in one house. The family lives in the other and the houses are massive. Um, and, you know, quite often, you know, 2,500 square feet would be a small house in Queens Park, but quite often you see houses in the 4,000 square foot range and the lots can be 6,000, 8,000, 10,000 square feet. When you compare that to the city of Vancouver, where it's just 4,000 square feet. And like I said, not only this central location in all of Metro Vancouver, but the great thing too, is you have all of these trans these are subway or sky train stations um, and so you don't have to take a car you could jump on the sky train and go to get over to surrey eventually not too long from now over to langley but you can also get up to coquitlam port moody um, and if you work downtown or just need to get to a business meeting downtown you can hop on the sky train that way or get out to the airport super quick um, one of the, 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 the issues I find in New Westminster for a lot of people is the traffic. And again, it comes down to being at the crossroads of so many centers of population. If you're over here uh, and wanna go over here, I mean, sure, you might go that way, but you might also go this way. Um, if you wanna get to Simon Fraser University, that's how you'd be doing it. If you want to get out here to Vancouver and Surrey is about to surpass Vancouver in population size. So there is a lot of transfer between Vancouver, Burnaby and Surrey. And a lot of that goes through New West. Uh, so that is one of the issues if you live in New West, but if you're in Queens Park, you're kind of removed from it. And if you don't need to rely on your car to go anywhere, well, and you can just take the SkyTrain or you can just stay within uh, New Westminster, it's a beautiful place to live. Uh, schools are great. The environment is great. The homes are fantastic. Prices aren't all that low. You know, it, it's a, a relatively affordable place to live in an environment like that. It is much, much cheaper. I think we're looking at about one third to one quarter of typical prices in Shaughnessy in Vancouver versus Queens Park in New Westminster. So if that's the vibe you're going for, if you love old character homes, you love history, and you want a big house for you and your family in a central 
location that's close to an urban environment and it's still easy to get around, Queens Park is an area you definitely need to consider. And once again, I'm not surprised that we've seen prices appreciate so much in the last year. And I also think I do want to say that this would be an area that I'm also not all that surprised. It's a little more heavily hit by interest rate sensitivity as a lot of people are going to be self-employed. They're going to be investing in things. Uh, these are people that generally have a little bit higher net worth than some of the other areas. So prices came down a little more substantially. And let's let's have a look at how prices did come down. So here we see uh, in March of 2022, again, at that peak, just before interest rates really started to climb, uh, 1.5 million. And today we're above that at 1,532,000 but it fell all the way down in December of 2022 to 1.24 million. So 250,000, that's, that's a pretty substantial, you know, what, what are we, over 15% decline and very quickly increased uh, as, as we saw in Willingdon Heights as well uh, into July when we saw some a couple surprise interest rate hikes um, the rhetoric before that was very positive, so we saw that. And then those surprise hikes kind of pushed us sideways until the rhetoric got a little more positive again and, and prices continued to increase. So this is a pattern, as I said, we see over and over again with these specific areas. I mean, to be honest, to some degree, all of Metro Vancouver, but this uh, snap back hasn't happened everywhere. It's only in uh, what I would say are the most family oriented, the areas that people really want to be in. Interestingly, aside from Yaletown, a lot of it has to do with, uh, with, with family areas, with detached homes, good schools, uh, convenient areas to be. Uh, that's what we've seen with Willingdon Heights and Queens Park as well. So Queens Park isn't a large area and it's not incredibly dense. There's just 2,800 people that live in Queens Park that are lucky enough to call it home. And that relates to 4,000 people per square kilometer. So that's actually, to be honest, still fairly dense, but in comparison to the city of Vancouver's density of 6,000 and Yale Town's density of 26,000 people per square kilometer. Obviously down at 4,000, it isn't the most densely populated area, but that is because it is primarily single family residential with some condos thrown in there. But that's the feeling, the vibe that you're gonna have in Queens Park. Right, so now we're on to area number four and I keep expecting that we're gonna, I kept expecting that we'd keep going out further into the suburbs and head out into the Fraser Valley because that's where we saw so much price, price appreciation in, in recent years through COVID. Not the case, to be honest. I mean, we don't know for sure what number one is, but uh, number two is West Vancouver. And there, there are actually eight areas in West Vancouver that all vied within this top range. And I'm just kind of clumping them all together because I didn't want to go through one area after another of West Vancouver. So my apologies for those of you that live in West Vancouver. I love West Vancouver, um, but I don't want to get into all that detail and bore you with eight different neighborhoods over there in West Vancouver. But very conveniently, they kind of clump together. Uh, so let's look where, first of all, where West Vancouver is, and it is over here that is west vancouver we got to head over the Lionsgate bridge and past stanley park to head over to to west vancouver it is a beautiful area i i really do love it as a kid i spent a lot of time heading over there not just to get up to the cypress bowl but also to explore uh, lighthouse park and white cliff um, some very very fond memories visiting friends over there today west vancouver is actually one of the most expensive areas that you could possibly find in metro vancouver so that's quite something for uh, one of the most expensive cities in the world uh this is one of the most expensive areas that you're going to find and it is very specifically the areas that we are talking about are kind of these west the the western edge this zone and um and and not so much this zone that's a little denser you do find some condos uh you do find uh, smaller lots in this area than you do out in this direction 
Um, and so let me just talk about West Vancouver in general. West Vancouver has 46,000 people living in it and just 500 people per square kilometer. So it's a, not a dense area, again, in comparison to what we've spoken about. And for a very long time, West Vancouver has been one of the most desirable parts of Metro Vancouver to live in. And if you have money, if you have the means, this is an area that you are more than likely going to be drawn to for a lot of really good reasons. I mean, some of the views that you can have, and especially, you know, this, this is all mountain um, here. And so as you get up on the slopes, you have in so many properties that have views um, over the water, over Bowen Island, um, incredible sunset views, um, right over into the city of Vancouver, over Stanley Park, um, and just water views in general. Um, that's something on this side of the water that is much more rare because the slope isn't as steep. Um, and so this zone, however, the properties are larger, um, they're more luxurious, they're they're less so there's not a there's not a there's not a street grid we can see as we if we zoom in here um it's real slow but you can see it looks kind of like spaghetti um versus this zone over here look at that pretty street grid that looks much more like the city of vancouver than um than it does on the on the north shore but the result of 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 this is that there's there are just some beautiful homes taking advantage of the light of the nature um and the architecture of this area is extraordinary in a lot of cases uh, a lot of beautiful homes were built in the 60s and 70s but so many amazing homes have been built in recent years as well there's one house right now over here on Radcliffe that is spectacular. It's the most expensive house in West Vancouver. Um, not only in West Vancouver, in fact, it's the most expensive house in all of Canada on the market right now. If you happen to have $60 million, well, I can recommend you a house and I'd love to help you buy it. Uh, but you do have to check this listing out. It is spectacular and right on the water right in this area right here, 200 feet of uh, your own waterfront um, and a gorgeous house that I would very happily not only help uh, per you purchase, but I'd love to purchase it myself one day if I had the means. Um, but that's just one example. I mean, $60 million is extreme. So for West Vancouver, I averaged the eight areas. Um, it came out to an increase of 9.6% over the last year. Typical house in this area is $3,090,450. Um, this is an area that saw massive declines. So looking at one of these eight areas very specifically, this sub area, Cyprus, uh, in August of 2022. So it held on into, into the fall of 2022 prices rose to four and a half million dollars um, and then they fell look at this 3.6 million so that is nearly a million dollar decline pretty close to about 20 percent decline from the peak to the trough um, in may of 2023 and then as soon as interest rates right as soon as interest rates increased you saw a bit of a dip um, and a sideways move and then of course as uh, rhetoric softened up again, prices increased, and we're almost back at the peak uh, that they saw in August of 2022. We're just about a hundred thousand dollars, yeah, a hundred thousand dollars off. Um, but you can see this area is far more sensitive to uh, interest rate hikes than than most areas. And I was saying this a little bit when I was talking about uh, New West's Queens Park, but here more than anywhere else, you have people that are very wealthy, uh, that have a lot going on. Most often they're gonna be entrepreneurs or highly paid in one, one way or another, but very smart with their money. And also some of those people probably leveraged pretty substantially. And for that reason, you know, for one, 
people with money were much more careful with that money through COVID. So they're less likely to be purchasing in a neighborhood like this. Um, and then those people that were in this neighborhood perhaps needed to sell when they didn't really want to in order to shore up their finances um, as interest rates rose from that 0.75% way up to 5%. Um, and that's a massive jump if your mortgage is $3 million or $4 million or $2 million. No matter how much your mortgage is, that is a massive jump and go it's going to impact you. But in an area like this, uh, people were more sensitive to it, uh, quite obviously. And also we're seeing that snap back as it's very clear that interest rates are on the decline and people are less worried about it. People are moving back into these areas and the popularity of this zone has really incredibly snapped back you know that decline of 20 percent basically wiped out in the course of a year that is something i think that we are there's so much going for this part of west vancouver um, and people with money i know that for those of us that aren't in this world uh, it's tough for us to understand uh, but there are a lot of people with money that are looking to put it somewhere and they want to live in nice homes. They want to be in a nice community. They want to be around good schools. They want so much of what Vancouver has to offer. And this is really the prime of that. You can shoot up right up the highway, um, head to your place in Whistler. Uh, you can jump on a ferry and head to your place on the Sunshine Coast out this way or onto one of the Gulf Islands, uh, like Gabriola over there. Um, and yet you're also so close to the city. So, you know, a night out in the town, business meetings, uh, that's all right there. And you have everything at your doorstep, but you feel very much removed from it all in West Vancouver. And I, that, that is what is really special. I have talked a fair amount about the negative impacts of weather on the North shore. And I do want to point out that most of that negative aspect is sort of in this zone where the storms are coming, uh, the clouds are coming off the ocean and hitting the mountains. For the most part, this area is much drier. Um, and so that is part of what people really appreciate in this zone. You're not sort of in the shadow of the mountains. It's very bright. You get beautiful sunsets, you get the ocean views, you get the city views, and you don't get the downsides of kind of being in this section, um, which is a great place to live. But if you're looking for areas that are are not as impacted by uh, by sort of the, 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 the rain and the clouds, well, you're gonna see a lot more sun uh, for the most part. I mean, it's not, it's, it's, it's not as much sun as you're gonna find um, and and not as warm as you're gonna find down here in Tawasson and in White Rock. Uh, but just if you're wanting to live on the North Shore and so many people do like being sort of around Vancouver, but not quite in it and more in, is more of the natural environment, they're gonna be drawn to, to, to these areas just over on the North Shore. And so once again, I'm not surprised at what's been happening here. First of all, why it's so popular to begin with, but why we've seen prices snap back so quickly. And this is another area that is gonna be, for a long period of time, I think a very, very solid investment. All right, so here we are for the final area, the number one uh, area for price appreciation in the last year. And I was shocked by what number one is, to be perfectly honest, I was really, really surprised. We have not left the city of Vancouver or Metro Vancouver. We haven't gone out into the Fraser Valley and we're not going to. We're going to stay close by. Um, we, where have we been? We've been in downtown Vancouver in Yaletown. We've been over here, Willingdon Heights. We've been over here in Queens Park and we've been over here uh, to eight different neighborhoods of West Vancouver. The next one, we're going to break this line. Uh, we're jumping over here to Port Moody. This is the city of Port Moody right over here. Another one of my favorite little suburbs. Um, it's a sneaky one, it's a little hidden, but I love it. Uh, it has so much going for it. Your access to nature is absolutely phenomenal. There's a lot of fun things to do in Port Moody. 
uh, great breweries. If you love beer, I happen to not be a fan of beer, but despite that, I still really like Port Moody and I love that it's on the water. And I think that is one of the reasons that this particular neighborhood, and it is the Barber Street neighborhood of Port Moody, Barber Street sub, uh, sub area. And so if again, sort of this general area is Port Moody, this is sort of where a lot of density is being built and, and along Clark now as well. And up here, we mostly have townhouses, some detached homes, but for the most part, townhouses and a couple small buildings as well. Um, there's not a lot of uh, single family detached homes up here. But if you're looking for it and you want to find it, well, you're going to find it right here. And this is roughly the Barber Street neighborhood. Similar to what we saw in West Vancouver, similar to what we saw in Queens Park and Willingdon Heights, it's families that are driving this market. And they're people who want really good schools. And there's an excellent elementary school um, as well as high school in this area. It's a pleasant side of elementary and then high school is not that far up in this area. So you have these at your doorstep. Um, you also have incredible views, uh, sort of what I was talking about in West Vancouver too, but um, you can have really beautiful views overlooking the water um, of Burnaby Mountain over here and um, right along the water. Your access to the water is phenomenal. Your access into the mountains is really great as well. So similar to West Vancouver, this is a less expensive West Vancouver vibe. Um, you're near the city, not in it. You're more in nature and you have access to the water in a really strong family neighborhood. So there's just 2000 people that live here and it has a population density of just 700 people per square kilometer. So like West Vancouver, it's not a very dense area. All that we have in Barber Street is detached homes. Um, but in the last year, you saw a massive increase of 10.9% in Barber Street, um, rising prices up to $2,354,000. Uh, for a house and you have houses that are more luxury oriented. Um, and I think I've talked in my video about Port Moody, the pros and cons of Port Moody. I took some video up in this area, up here in Bunsen Lake and over here at Sassamat Lake, that white, white pine beach and the village of Anmore right here. This has really become a, an area that people have targeted as a little more luxurious. There's some beautiful big houses, big pieces of land. Um, people are building really beautiful estates in this area. Um, and so Barber Street allows you sort of access into that world at not quite the same price point. Um, smaller properties, but some of them are incredibly luxurious. People are building brand new homes to take advantage of the nature and take advantage of the views of the ocean if they have them. Uh, but there's also some really nice older homes that have had stunning renovations as well. And so this little spot is just kind of tucked away in the woods, but you have really quick access to the urban feel of downtown Port Moody and all of the amenities that come with it, the shopping and the restaurants and the breweries and the parks. Um, and you have access to the water down here or over here. Um, or around the corner here as well. And then more recently, you also have SkyTrain access and the West Coast Express. Um, so you can jump on the SkyTrain and that can take you really quickly into downtown Vancouver. I mean, it's, it's a very quick commute and very convenient. And that is driving a lot more popularity for these areas that people weren't really considering living here with the awkwardness that it might take to get to downtown. And as much as, as close as we are, um, Port Moody is not far from downtown Vancouver, as you can see on the map, Port Moody right here and downtown Vancouver. But this can be a pretty awkward commute and it can take quite some time if you're relying on a car. That's where the SkyTrain and the West Coast Express are fantastic. Um, and they can really cut down on the commute and the inconvenience of it. This once again is one of those family neighborhoods. These are the areas, these detached areas seem to be really what the theme is for all of these areas that we're looking at, except for Yale Town. But all of these areas were badly hit uh, as a result of 
of interest rate hikes. And once again, we can see this peak in May of 2022. Um, this is for Barber Street. Uh, and once again, just sort of detached homes um, rising to 2,387,700 in May of 2022 falling all the way in November of 2022 to 2,030,000 roughly. So that's a $350,000 decline, um, getting close to that 15% range, uh, really substantial decline in price. And then you can see that it uh, kind of tried to, to rise, went sideways, um, and has in the last nine months seen a very steady increase to the point where we're now in Barber Street, almost at the same as, as the prices were at, the, at its peak in May of 2022. An area that I think is gonna see, continue to see a lot of popularity. People are looking for alternatives um, a little bit outside of the city, but they still want the convenience of the city. They still want children to be able to go to good schools um, and be able to walk to school. And, and Port Moody is one of those areas where you're not in the city, you're on the edges of the urban environment, but you have really easy access to the urban environment. And, you know, that is what we're seeing from, whether it's in West Vancouver or Queens Park um, or Willingdon Heights, these are all areas at the edge of the urban environment. Some of them a little more urban, than others, but all of them very family oriented, except for Yale Town. And so these are five areas that I understand the popularity. I get why we've seen such a massive price increase over the last year. And I really do think that this isn't the end of it, that, the, that these price increases are gonna continue. The popularity of these areas will continue. Um, there's just not enough supply for the kind of demand that there is for these neighborhoods. If you're thinking of moving here, I, I would keenly suggest considering all of these areas and be sure to check my back catalog of videos that where I get into more details about these areas, whether it's living in downtown or in Port Moody or in New Westminster. I haven't done one yet about West Vancouver and I've been promising one of my loyal viewers that I will get onto it. I definitely will because these are all incredibly popular parts of Metro Vancouver and stunning places to live. Um, you definitely want to be considering these. If you are considering moving to Vancouver, don't forget, I am a real estate agent. I've helped hundreds of people move here and I can help you navigate the quagmire of Vancouver real estate and help you figure out where the right place for you and your family is. And not only the right place, but the right home. Um, it is so important to understand what you're getting into. First step is getting in contact with me and my contact information is right there on the screen. Reach out anytime. But don't forget that I have a huge back catalog of videos that I've made just for you so you can understand what it's like to live here. Be sure to go through all those videos. I am putting out videos every single week about what it's like to live here and move to Vancouver. Um, and this week, of course, we've talked about the areas that are seeing the, the most price appreciation. And I think, I don't know, like were you as surprised as I was about what these areas are? Be sure to comment down below. I'd love to hear your opinions about this as well. If you wanna check out some very specific videos, I have a couple I think you're gonna really like. I did a couple videos about the best suburbs to live in. Uh, video number one over here and video number two, those are videos I would love to meet you on. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on next week's video as well.